Hello everyone. Uh, this is Akira from Yamato Manufacturing. Um, we're, uh, thank you for joining us for the second uh, special noodle class online uh, on our YouTube channel, Yamato Noodle. Okay, um, some of you like who um, don't know much about us, like Yamato Manufacturing. Um, let me uh, briefly explain um, our company first. So um, we are 45 year old uh, manufacturer of noodle making machines. Um, we uh, manufacture noodle making machines that are like designed to do um, uh, Japanese noodles mainly. Um, you know, like ramen, um, udon, soba, um, but mainly used by uh, um, restaurants and small production. Um, and of course, like we've been running um, noodle schools um, for those of you like who are um, kind of like thinking of like starting up a noodle restaurants, um, some like um, business like ready to noodles. Um, so we run uh, this noodle school like in Tokyo, um, Kagawa and Singapore. And uh, we actually restarted our noodle school like uh, from this um, uh, situation with COVID-19, like actually last week uh, here in Kagawa. Um, so for, you know, uh, if the travel ban is like lifted, like, yeah, please, uh, you know, think about coming to our school in Japan as well, like in uh, Singapore. Okay, and then like we have like over, um, you know, customers like over, um, 65, 61 countries and like, you know, we are increasingly um, having more and more customers like in different countries around the world. And we have like distributors like in partners like in different countries. Okay. Um, so, you know, we, uh, we help uh, our customers like to um, achieve, um, you know, their um, dreams of like, uh, you know, becoming like opening up new restaurants. And uh, well, of course, like, you know, pro producing like um, craft noodles and like uh, local restaurants um, and they like supermarkets and different um, businesses. So we have like group of experts like that are like, um, you know, uh, that have like many, many years like experience like producing noodles, like teaching um, students um, to uh, become uh, noodle masters, uh, ramen shop owners. Okay, so let's get into um, today's subject. That's that's like noodles suitable for um, takeout um, and uh, deliveries. So um, yeah, because of this like situation with COVID-19, like um, well, a lot of uh, our customers like noodle restaurants have been like um, uh, struggling with their businesses because of the, uh, um, the restrictions, restrictions like um, from the government and then, you know, like they like basically the dining experiences um, that they sort of like provide are limited. So, um, you know, we, we have been like kind of thinking about like, and then like, of like how we can, um, you know, help. And then, um, so we've been thinking about like um, how we can, um, you know, create like noodles like that are good for takeouts, suitable for takeouts. And of course, like, you know, that there are challenges um, to um, providing a good take on noodles. Um, because like, basically like noodle soups and dishes are like not really suitable for uh, take on noodles. Um, so like, um, there are the challenges, like, you know, we basically have like things like, you know, there are five of them. And um, of course, like um, there, there's a difficulty, like with the customers, like preparing noodles, uh, noodle dishes at home. Um, then like basically like in short, like, you know, it's very hard for the customers to like kind of have the kind of same or like similar experience, like in terms of quality wise, like in dining uh, to the dining experience that they may have like at um, in the restaurants. And um, um, super noodle dishes are like hard to like make into uh, take on noodles. Um, Cause like customers carrying them like in back home, like, you know, they, um, because it's hot, because it's hot or like, because of the soup, um, they may spill some like on the way home. Um, and then difficulty in um, uh, retaining noodle texture after cooking. So like you you serve the noodles like to the customer like for takeout, but like you cook the noodles and then like you um, put on the takeout um, product. But like noodles like lose the texture like over time. Um, so like by the time they um, the customers, um, you know, get home or like start eating them. 
uh, noodle texture is gone, like it's all soft and not really um, good texture. So, um, and the cost of takeout containers and packages and the availability of like adequate, adequate um, containers. And we basically have like rely on the customers to be able to like, um, you know, prepare the uh, takeout noodle dish like you uh, maybe like prepare like noodle uh, takeout kit and stuff like that. Um, so it's, it's, you know, a bit hard for the customers who are not used to cooking um, to do a good job of like preparing them. So you have to like make it um, uh, easy enough for the customers to do it. So how do we overcome these kind of challenges? And for, um, for noodle, um, so what, like we thought about like what makes noodles suitable for takeout, right? Um, so we think like there are three points to making um, noodles uh, suitable for takeouts. So um, first, first one is like texture holding property. So like, you know, as we talked about like noodles, um, if you cook them and then like um, provide, them with the, provide them to the customers, then by the time like customers get home and uh, like start eating, like, you know, they're all soft, you know, the texture is gone. So, um, you know, we want to retain the noodle texture um, as much as possible, like after cooking. And second point is like noodles that um, go well with a small amount of soup. So we talked about like, you know, soup like being kind of problematic, like, because, you know, because like customers have to like carry back home that way on the way home, like they, um, you know, some of the soup like may, may spill and then like um, make a mess, right? So, you know, we need to think about like um, noodle dish that go well with the uh, um, small amount of soup. Um, then, um, because of the situations with like COVID-19, um, you know, we, we've seen like more, more and more people are kind of, well, you know, having more time, like, you know, they have to stay home. So um, they have more time. And then like some of the people like who never cooked before are kind of like getting used to like um, cooking, like and they're more willing to cook at home. So, you know, we could, uh, well, you know, some of the customers may like maybe willing to like take home um, you know, like uncooked noodles, uh, and they like cook them at home. So um, in that case, like we could have like noodles that are like, that could like cook in short time. So that's the third point. Okay, um, so let's start talking about like the first point, um, texture retaining property. Um, so noodles um, retain texture for a while after cooking um, is, a, is a very important. So like, how do we do that? So we could do um, in different ways. Um, we could do like, you could actually increase the noodle size. We could uh, change the ingredients. Um, we could um, um, increase like increase like this um, texture retain property by like um, doing like a bit of like a resting process, and um, and uh, like uh, cooking time as well, changing cooking time. And there was good texture, right? So that's like chewy and hard, but like elastic texture. Um, and what makes noodle texture like uh, last long after cooking, right? And why noodles get soggy and soft after cooking? We need to understand this like to, well, make the noodle texture uh, last long after cooking. Okay, um, and then there are two patterns of like noodle texture going bad, right? And the first one is noodles getting soggy after a short period time of cooking and then starch uh, in noodles actually go dry and then like hardens and comes like fragile after cooking. Um, the second situation, like we, it's, it's very hard for us like prevent it, but like first um, case, like we can um, actually do something about it. So how noodles get cooked and soft in hot soup, right? I think we showed this like slide like in last class, like we did like in last month. But like, um, so we, this is like a cut surface with the noodles. Like, you know, we um, dissect the noodles and they're like, you know, we are looking at from the, um, yeah, from the cut surface. And then, um, so the noodles like, so when the noodles get cooked, right, then the, the water, uh, cooking water like uh, are absorbed like from the side of the noodles like that are cut, in the cut um, surface, and then um, that's how the noodles um, get cooked. Like right? um, so, 
first like fresh noodles and like noodles are getting cooked and then like waters are absorbed like from the side. And, uh, but that's like when the noodles are get um, cooked and then like noodles still have like some texture in it, in them. Um, so the center, the core part of the noodles are not um, yet cooked. But um, so that, that part has that, well, um, that bite to it. So like, um, that, that's the, that's the kind of like texture that like, you know, we're talking about good texture that we are talking about. And when the, all the like um, areas with noodles are penetrated by the um, cooking water or like a soup, then um, that's when the noodles get uh, soggy, like soft, like you not know, lost, like all the texture. So we need to um, um, prevent like hot soup, like, or like uh, um, the cooking water, like from penetrating the noodle, like as much as possible. Like, so we need to slow the speed of like penetration of the water. So how, okay. So this picture shows like kind of, it's a, it's a kind of extreme example of like um, how the noodles are cut, right? Um, so like on the right, right hand side, like that's the, we, we call them like reverse cut noodles. Like, so um, in the, uh, the slide, the previous slide, like in the right hand side, reverse cut noodles. So that's like width is like uh, smaller than the thickness. So the cut side is like large, larger than the, um, Larger, so like the uh, these kind of noodles like absorb like more soup like faster, uh, and then like on the left hand side like that's kind of square, um, but so like cut stuff is like smaller, um, so that um, it absorbs like water like uh, slower than the uh, the one on the right hand side. Okay, um, so uh, first one um, first way like we could do like is that like you know we need to uh, like the, it's a resting process. Um, there are like three types of resting process, but this is the third one. Um, and so like we need to like you know, rest the noodles, like after we made the noodles in refrigerator like for um, one or two nights. And this um, helps um, kind of lose the like air bubbles um, in the noodles. Um, so like there are some like air bubbles like in uh, the pockets like inside the noodles and then like by resting them, we need we can um, get rid of these uh, bubbles so that like when the noodles are get, noodles are cooked um, it um, if, if like if you know the noodles have like air bubbles like pockets then like noodles cooked and then that that's gonna burst that these air bubbles are gonna burst so that that's gonna damage the uh, gluten structure and then that uh, to make noodles like um, prone to like getting soft faster so that's one of the like ways that you can do is like resting process. And um, so we are going over like this kind of chart um, um, uh, a couple of times this class, but like, so this shows um, um, noodle, different noodle types like by um, the hydration ratio, how much water is uh, contained in the noodles and then like have like a protein content of noodles, I mean flour that's used to um, make these noodles and then the size of the noodles. And um, uh, so like, we're gonna be going back to this uh, chart later, but like basically like X axis um, presents like a hydration ratio and then Y axis presents like a protein content ratio of the flour that you used to cut, um, make these noodles. Basically the higher the protein, the uh, harder the noodle texture and lower the water content, the harder the noodle texture. Um, and then the right hand side, like that's the, uh, the cutter sizes that are used to cut these noodles, like on the, from like 1.0 uh, millimeter to like 2.5 millimeters, like thinner to thicker. And so um, by changing the size, um, we can retain, we can like help like retain the uh, noodle uh, texture. Uh, so like this, like bigger the size, um, the longer uh, you can retain the noodle texture. So for um, this, like the, so like we are talking about like um, the big yellow circle, like dipping noodles, like 2 mm, um, that uh, we are going to be uh, um, talking about later. Um, but like this is basically one uh, one of the ways we can uh, uh, make the noodles uh, last longer in the hot soup. And the ingredients, because we can change the ingredients to um, feed the noodles within their textures uh, longer. 
Uh, one of them is like we, we use is like egg white, egg white powder. So egg white powder like uh, works like plays a role of like kind of like keeping the um, um, noodles like from, um, uh, like it's, it works as like a sort of like a waterproof kind of um, effect. Like it's not exactly waterproof, but like it um, kind of like covers the noodles in a way that like it kind of prevents um, um, water, hot water, like uh, hot soup, like from um, penetrating the noodles. So uh, egg white we use, um, but like, you know, we, we shouldn't use like a mu uh, too much of egg white. Uh, we do like about like maybe like one to two percent of the weight of our flour. Um, another one like we may use like you know, it's a gluten powder. So that's an extract of gluten powder, uh, gluten, and which makes the um, noodle like harder. And uh, so like you know making noodles harder, um, that we can well the noodles like uh, keep the uh, texture like longer a bit longer time. Another one we may consider using is a kansi, uh, but like. Tons of cancer, like we are doing like um, more of the potassium carbonate. Potassium carbonate, um, we talked about like in the last class, but like we, uh, that increases the hardness uh, in the noodle texture. So um, the one that we are using today is like, it's actually 60%, 40%, 60% .40%, uh, potassium carbonate, 40% sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate works exactly the opposite way. So like it makes it softer. So um, by increasing the blending ratio of the uh, currency, um, increasing the potassium carbonate, we can um, make the noodles harder, um, which means like we can, well, make the noodles like last longer in hot soup. And uh, uh, water, um, we could uh, change like um, hydration ratio um, to increase the uh, uh, retaining uh, property as well. Okay, um, um, another way you can uh, make the um, noodle texture uh, last one way is like, um, so, yes, um, so like, you know, when, if, if you're like um, um, providing like takeout noodles, dishes, takeout noodle dishes, and uh, you, um, then like you need to like cook the noodles um, before you, um, hand them over to customers. Uh, so we could do is that like, you know, we could like cook the noodles like shorter time, um, which means that like noodles are like, harder. So which means that like, you know, like remember that um, picture like we showed you, like the core of the noodles like still like intact, like not like penetrated by water. So um, yes, we like we could, we, so like if the noodles like need to be cooked like for like two minutes, we could stop cooking like at like maybe like one and a half minute or something. Um, but what's important here like to remember is that like noodles have to be um, gelatinized. Uh, gelatinization is like, um, so like starch of noodles um, um, from like, you know, heating, when like you heat it like in a liquid. Um, so like then the starch of noodle like a swell upon heating and then um, becomes clear gel-like um, texture. So, uh, it needs to be happen like before we stop like stop like cooking noodles. Okay, um, so the second um, thing like second point that we have like for these like um, noodles that are suitable for takeout is that like you know we need to think about like some noodles that are good with like small amount of soup. Um, so it's it's like we, we talk about like so it's difficult to um, for like consumers customers like carry like no, super noodles like this security home um, right so um, there are many many types uh, like noodle dishes um, that are actually like already available um, in, like you know uh, like that are already served like a lot of um, different noodle restaurants for example like mazemen like brasaba um, which is like basically the um, kind of same kind of category of like mazemen, um, jajamen. Um, that's that's uh, kind of like Korean style, like sort of um, uh, noodle dish. Um, and sukemen dipping noodles. Um, the yakisoba uh, stuff this is like basically stir fried noodles. And shiashchuka, like that's like cold noodles. Um, so what do they have in common, right? Well, rather common char characteristics. Um, so for for example, like a noodle size, 
uh, and tends to be bigger, like thickness and then width, bigger, uh, which leads to like higher hydration ratio. Um, that's according to the, the chart like we showed you uh, before. Um, and then neural texture uh, is relatively softer but chewier. Uh, this is because of like higher height ratio as well. Let me show some pictures of these uh, types of noodles. So like um, on the left, top left, like that's like Jaja Min. Um, that's with the like sort of um, kind of kind of bean paste like with the, like some uh, ground meat um, uh, pastry uh, sort of um, paste um, sauce on it. Like in the, basically you just have to like mix it, mix it up like with the noodles and eat it. And then the middle one, uh, the one top and middle, like that's tsukimen, tippy noodle. Uh, the right top, like that's yakisoba, stuffed right noodles. And then uh, left um, bottom, that's uh, his chuka, like cold noodles. Um, the middle, like uh, that's uh, brasoba. And then the right bottom, that's the uh, uh, mazemen. And then we are gonna be like putting together like some of these uh, dishes like later in the kitchen. Um, show you. And so this picture actually we uh, only have like in uh, our, on, on a website, our um, blog, that's a little master lab. Uh, but basically like, um, so the ramen has been like kind of evolving. This is like, this shows like sort of the evolution of ramen. Um, and then, so the standard ramen, like we are talking about like noodle soup um, style. Um, so yeah, you have like hot, uh, like cold noodle uh, soup Right, and then um, you have noodles in there, and then like soup is that consists of like um, soup stock, uh, tare, and then like uh, oil, and the amount of soup like high, like big, right? And then by like um, that soup density is like low to uh, high, and sukemen, um, so that sukemen has been like around like for like almost like 30 years, 40 years, but um, this is like new genre of like you know, ramen um, that's very, that's been very popular. Um, so you have noodles um, and noodles are like cooked and then like um, my rinsed and then um, uh, chilled in the cold water and then uh, served like that, like in a bowl. And then like you have um, a small um, soup that's very, very dense. dense. Um, and then like density of the soup is like very high. And then the third one, like, uh, is like mazemen. That's uh, uh, so basically you have um, the very small amount of soup, like or like or even sauce, like some oil, and then you just have to like mix it with the sauce, and then like eat it. So basically, like, uh, ramen's been like evolving, evolving, like you know, um, then like kind of like losing um, uh, soup over time. So we are we're kind of like kind of kind of like as, as we advance, like, you know, we are, we are like, yeah, we're gonna be having like less and less soup. So, so we think that, going back to the chart, right? Uh, so we think that like noodles suitable for like takeout and deliveries are like in those like kind of like somewhere like in between like kind of purple circle, the, rims, um, the right bottom um, so that the noodle size is like bigger, and then the, the amount of water is higher, and then the, the um, protein content of the flour that are you, you're using to make these noodles like a lower. So like basically it's softer, but chewier, and they're like you know, bigger in noodle size. And another point I wanna touch on is like short cooking time. Um, so, you know, let me talk about like, you know, more people like willing to like do some cooking at home. Um, so we need to like kind of take advantage of like um, the, this tendency like to let customers cook noodles at home. Um, I think like we may have to like do some like education. Um, and then I've seen like some of like our customers, um, different countries are doing like some like video, um, you know, showing like how they cook noodles, like how they warm the uh, like soup and then like put them together. Uh, and then that, that's like really good. Um, educational like material and then that's something like you can do like pretty easily. Um, then like noodle size matters, um, especially like, thickness or like area of like hot surface. Um, so like we, we do have this like this like little table like in, on our website as well. Like so um, it's like the higher the hydration 
um, the shorter the cooking time. But the, the, the larger the size, um, the longer the cooking time. I guess like this, um, the size um, it, like matters like more than the, uh, the hydration ratios. Like um, if you have like high uh, water content noodle, but like um, the larger, I mean, the, that's like large in size, like in thickness and width, um, the cooking time is like long. Um, so, but um, my point is like you could have um, yes, um, noodles that are like uh, small in size, and then um, you can like let customers uh, cook noodles at home. So basically, um, we're talking about like somewhere between like uh, maybe like um, the red circle, like Chukasawa Tokyo stab ramen, or like even like Hakata ramen. Like so, like cooking time maybe like for um, Tokyo ramen is like maybe like one minute, um, uh, uh, more, a little bit more longer. So maybe like one, like 70 seconds or so. And Hakata ramen is like maybe like 30 seconds. So like, so maybe like shorter the cooking time, like the more willing the customers are to um, the cooking. So um, for like, you know, those be like who are um, interested in like solving, uh, like letting the customers cook at home, like, you know, you may want to think about um, or serving them with uh, like um, noodles that are small in size. Okay, um, so this is like what I what I have like for this like um, this, uh, slide uh, in this class. But like you know we are not perfect, of course. Like so, um, we're gonna be doing more on this kind of subject. Uh, I don't know later in the coming coming classes. Uh, so like for those of you like for interested in this, in this kind of subject, like you know please. Uh, Yep, um, subscribe to our, our YouTube channel. Okay, um, so let's start like um, making some noodles. And um, I'm going to show you guys like some of the ingredients we have over here. So, um, so for the noodles, like we're going to be making um, this class, right? Like we're just going to be using, um, it's like wheat flour, uh, but like this wheat flour has like protein content of like 11.5%. Um, and this is just the water, this is a pure water. Um, then uh, we have like salt, and then we have kansi. And then as we, as I said, like this has like 60% potassium carbonate, 40% sodium carbonate. And we have over here, like, um, you know, we talked about like egg white, it's in a powder form, um, but like you can use like fresh eggs as well. And the gluten, so it's like this is gluten, like so that like this gluten uh, powder, like just by adding it, like just makes the noodles like harder. Um, so these two, uh, you may want to use like to um, uh, make the noodles like retain the the texture like longer. Um, other Ingredients like we might use are like like whole eggs, right? Or in powder form, and it's like coloring agent. Um, so like if you are like want to make if you want to make like noodles that are like really yellow, like bright yellow, you might want to use uh, some of these. And then um, uh, we might use like like um, you know green. Um, want to have like green colors so like. Um, the spinach powder, like uh, seaweed powder, things like that. And then um, it's like whole wheat. So we're going to be like mixing it like in the flour to have like sort of um, this whole wheat, um, like more nutrient um, than the, like a regular flour. So we'll have some of these. <laughs> okay, um, so let's start making some noodles. And then um, the machine that we're going to be using today is that, like, um, we're calling it uh, Richmond Gold. Um, it's one of our, like, newest machines. And uh, this machine has um, 10 kilograms mixer. So, um, but, like, the minimum batch is, like, 4 kilograms. And then you can mix it up to, like, 10 kilograms of flour at a time. All right, so let's uh, start making some noodles. Right, so 
first we are going to be putting uh, just the flour, um, flour meaning like solid ingredients. And then we weight it like to like four kilograms. And then type of um, the noodles like we are making today is like are like, you know, of course, like type of noodle like we can use for uh, takeout and deliveries. So first, like we put um, flour in there, like in the mixing mixer, and we're going to start the mixer just with the flour. <clears throat> we won't like run it for like one minute, maybe like we call it air mixing um, because we want to make sure that like all the flowers like are like powdery, like and, like there are some chunks, like we want to break them into small pieces. And uh, we want to like get some air actually into the flow particles in this process. And uh, because the the lid has some uh, holes in them, um, so when we oh, okay, so first, um, so first like we need to like dissolve like all these uh, salt and tansy in water first. And uh, because we are dissolving these um, ingredients into the water, uh, you know, we call these two ingredients uh, liquid, liquid ingredients. And uh, we need to like count them as um, percentage of the, uh, the liquid. So that was 1% um, to the weight of the flour, 1% of the weight of the flour each. So that has like 2% to the um, liquid percentage. Okay, so, yeah, so the, the mixer lid has like some holes in them. So the water like liquid are like uh, added to the flour a little by little through the holes. We don't wanna add like water like you know, uh, all at once because that's gonna that's gonna just like make the um, flour wet, and um, because like in the mixing process, like what we want to do is like you know good um, good hydration of flour, so we want to distribute the uh, liquid um, equally like throughout the uh, flour particles. Um, you know we that's why like we need to add like water a little by little. And uh, mixing speed is also important. So we are like um, mixer has mixing speed of like 60 rotations per minute. Yeah, so like this machine is like um, is uh, more uh, advanced with uh, all these um, touch panels uh, control, um, and then so you're you're um, controlling all the uh, speed and like um, so roller gap things like that like on the touch panel okay so we can't wait um, forever for the mixer to be finished but like basically like we are um, mixing it for um, 10 minutes to in total but like we should start um, next process so we have um, we have some dough that's been mixed before previously. Um, this is actually two kilograms on dough, and uh, we're going to be um, feeding it to the rollers. Um, we call this process like rough um, sheeting. So we're going to be making a uh, rough sheet of dough first through the rollers. Um, And then with this handle, um, she's actually changing the roller gap to um, 1.5 millimeter and uh, setting the roller speed to um, slow speed first. And 
and here comes the, uh, the sheet of dough. And this machine, what's amazing about this machine is that it has a um, automatic feeding uh, function. And then, so the dough is like fed to the rollers like a, uh, little by little, like um, ideal like amount of uh, dough uh, at a time. I think it has uh, safety um, sensors, which um, when you touch the sensor, um, the machine stops. So this um, this dough was about like 38% um, um, hydration ratio, but like 2% of it uh, was um, uh, canxi and salt. So the actual amount of water is um, just 36%. Okay, so after after we make um, this like wrap sheet of dough, um, we're gonna be doing like this um, process called like combining process. You're like after we made the wrap sheet of dough, that dough itself like is still like fragile, so we need to like make it firm, make it, like um, stronger. So how we do that is like we're gonna separate this dough to like two sheets, two separate sheets, and then we're gonna be combining them, we're gonna be combining like through the rollers. So that was 1.5 millimeter, um, Roll a gap like that. This dough's then like going through. Um, so it's supposed to be supposed to be like each dough sheet is uh, 1.5 millimeter like in thickness. Um, but we are combining them together. So it's supposed to be like 1.5 plus 1.5. That's like three millimeters. So like three millimeter equivalent of dough is like going through the roll by right now. And then we want to um, you know apply like good um, amount of pressure. And uh, so we um, have this like rule, uh, like 70% rule. So at every uh, rolling um, round, like we um, apply the 70% rule. Like, so like that's three millimeter go going in. So we um, uh, multiply three by uh, 0.7, like 2.1 millimeter. So we set the roll gap to like around like 2.0, like just rounded um, down to the sake of like simplicity. So after combining the dough, it's like, it's very, very, um, very smoother than the before. So through this process, like we are sort of um, developing the uh, gluten structure inside dough. And this process, like we want to go slower. So um, we set the roller speed to uh, slow speed. So after that, um, we like to make sure that the good gluten structure is like developed. So we 
are going to do the combining process like for the second time. So again, like that was like two millimeter uh, roller gap like that um, little adult like it's gone through previously. So um, to, like each new load, I mean, each doll sheet, like it's supposed to be like um, two millimeter, right? And so two plus two, four, then four times 70%, um, um, 0 0.7, like 2.8. Uh, but we're going to be rounded up this time to make it simple to three millimeter. And then we are turning on this duster to um, dust, it, dust on the dough to prevent it from sticking. So after the second combining process, like this uh, dough is definitely, definitely um, more chewier and then um, harder and then uh, structurally like it's stronger than before. Okay, so after the second combine process, um, this dough is uh, ready uh, in terms of like um, the gluten structure. So all we do is just thin it, just thin it, right? Um, remember 70% rule. So like that was like three millimeter. Um, so multiply by like 0.7, um, that's 2.1. But like to make it simple, uh, round, it, round it down. 2.0 and from this point on we can speed up the rolling So we just apply the 70% rule to like make sure ensure that like this uh, gluten structure that's been developing inside the dough um, um, to like kept intact. Okay, so after it's going to like 2.0 millimeter of roller gap, like we need to we, we are like measuring the actual thickness and that's like 2.5 ish. And so there's like, so actual dough thickness is like, it's always bigger than the, uh, the roll gap we set. It's a, like a bounces back, like after like it's going through a roll gap. So, um, okay. So that's the difference like 0.5 millimeter. Uh, so the dough, um, bounces back by 0.5 millimeter, and uh, we are cutting it. We are cutting it now. Okay, and um, we are using using the cutter. That's that's 14. <laughs> Number 14 is about. Um, it's about like, um, it's like 2.0. 2. 2. In meter in width.
Okay, let's start cutting it. And when you cut it, like you can um, adjust the length of the noodles. And um, the length of noodle um, basically determines the, um, the serving size of the noodles. And basically, um, the takeout noodles, like for example, like tsuke men, like and naze men, um, because the soup, amount of soup is like tends to be like smaller, uh, less. So tendency is that like um, the noodle serving size uh, is bigger, is big. So for like, for example, like two kmen noodles um, have like serving size of like typically like 160 grams to like maybe like 200 grams. Um, Depending on like what you're eating, um, basically this is because like the um, the noodle shops are like compensating um, the small amount of soup with um, the bigger bigger size of, like something size of noodles. But the cost of like making noodles is um, definitely. Uh, less than uh, noodle, I mean, the making production of soup. So we just just cut like these noodles like to like using a number 14 cutter, but, like, um, where we want to um, we want to make some noodles that are like uh, koi. Uh, it's a bit like smaller um, cutter size, number sixteen, but like it has like some uh, attachment parts in the back of the back of it to make the noodles curly. So noodles are coming now. And you can actually adjust like a curliness in the noodles by um, adjusting the uh, attachment parts back the cutter. You can make them like curlier, um, you know, like or less curly. So how the noodles will get curled is that like um, the the cutter kind of has like some like uh, attachment parts back the cutter and um, yeah, let me show you. So it has um, some attachment parts like that's that's like um, the the silicone plates, and then so the noodles are stuck in there first, and then um, they get pushed out, 
and then in the frost like they get curled. Okay, um, so that's so we need we can use this type of like noodles like for um, mazemen and even like for tsukemen as well, um, and then you can change the size. You can change the size of noodles um, using different different cutters, different uh, cutter sizes. 18, like 14, that we just use like 12, like that's um, typically used for like tsukemen dipping noodles. Um, even for like some uh, noodles like uh, udon noodles. And number 20, um, so like we talked about like, um, you know, uh, you're gonna let like customers like cook uh, noodles at home, like for that type of noodle, like we could use like a number 20, um, maybe like cooking time would be like maybe one minute uh, and a little bit. And then like you can use like number 26, that's like 1.3 millimeter width. Like, so this noodle would be like, um, maybe cooked in like 30 seconds, uh, even like 20 seconds. And so we uh, we made some noodles, and um, so this is like high water content noodles, like with the like uh, whole wheat um, needed in them. And so this is uh, something this type of noodle like we could use for like for like stir fry noodles like yakisoba. Um, and then these noodles like have uh, some like um, seaweed powder needed in, in them. Um, talking about seaweed powder, like, um, so like, you know, people are uh, more like, I think more and more people like getting health conscious because um, of the virus. And then, um, you know, like seaweed is like one of the ingredients like we could use like to um, like boost the uh, immune system. So. It's something like you may want to like consider using like for um, takeout noodles. And then this is um, another one like has like this lemon, actually lemon powder. Lemon powder has like also like kind of skin in them. Um, so it has like some of the bitter uh, taste in them, but like uh, it's, it's a, something you might want to consider like using for um, the takeout uh, noodle dishes. Okay, um, so we want to um, start moving to the kitchen. And then we're gonna be, uh, we have like some instructors like standing by the kitchen like to show you guys like how the noodles are cooked and then like um, to put the, uh, how to like put the um, stuff together. Like we have a kitchen and um, some, some of our staff are like uh, actually working different things. Um, so let me introduce you guys, our uh, instructors. Um, first, like Mr. Ikeda, like our chief instructor. Um, he's, uh, his background is like in Chinese cuisine. So like he has a lot of knowledge, like that's kind of like similar to um, ramen. Um, so he's uh, teaching, um, he's been teaching like for a couple of years, like uh, like udon courses, like ramen courses, like so he knows a lot about um, cooking and the cuisines and the techniques as well. Um, so please feel free to ask him any questions you may have. And Ms. Ms. San, uh, like, uh, so he is actually, uh, he speaks Chinese. Um, then he's joined us like recently, but like he's a very well-trained uh, as an instructor. So if you have like some questions um, in Chinese, like feel free to ask him like, any questions. And then we have uh, uh, Mr. Takeuchi, um, we call him Thomas. Um, he's uh, actually from uh, Canada. So, uh, and then like he's, um, his um, nationality is like also like American as well. So like, so he speaks like uh, native English. So um, if you have any questions about like cooking, like in our school or anything, um, please feel free to ask him any questions. And then um, let me show you guys like some of our, our kitchen. So normally like we have like eight people maximum um, at the one class. And um, over there like we have uh, some induction cookers, like we have like 10 of them, like they are very powerful. So each induction cooker um, cooks uh, like different ingredients at a time, like so separately, like individually, like in each part, right? So um, so that like students, when we come there, like, and they like learn, 
so they know um, how like each ingredient you know tastes right um, so that after that like they can like combine them together um, so like it's like a, it's like a lab like where you know they can experiment like with the, like different ingredients and in different soup broth um, also uh, be um, make like tare like and then like flavor all like from scratch so we make like 30 or like 50 different kinds um, for students to like experiment with them so this is like basically a lab where um, you know we provide like students with anything, um, any kind of like, so like each student has like his uh, own idea of like, you know, what they want to do, like what they, what kind of ramen they want to do, right? So we provide them with the like environment, like ingredients. And then, um, so we, you know, they, they have like a place, uh, the resources to like make anything that they want to from scratch. And then at the end of the day, like they, uh, you know, go home like with uh, like sets of like recipes that they um, you know complete like during class, and then because we have like eight people at a time, like you know you they can work with like different uh, other other students who have like different ideas, right? So they can like share some ideas with um, together, right? Um, so um, you know it's it's very good. Like you know you not only like have like your own recipes, but like you know you can go home with like recipes like that are like maybe like you share like with other students as well. Okay, so um, I'm going to hand it to um, uh, Mr. Takeuchi Thomas uh, to explain uh, how the noodles are cooked and then like how to put together like take out um, dishes. Uh, once again, this is Thomas, um, one of the instructors at the Yamato Noodle School. And um, today I will show you how to prepare your takeout dish. And for the example, we're going to be using uh, mazemen and yakisoba. Okay. So let's just head to the boiling machine. So when you're preparing your uh, takeout menu, you have to prevent two problems. Uh, one problem is you have to prevent the noodles from getting soggy. And two, second problem is you have to prevent the noodles from sticking to each other and becoming a one whole clump. So to prevent those two problems, there's three tips for you. One, after you boil the noodles, you have to wash and chill the noodles. And you want to wash the noodles because uh, after you boil the noodles, there's going to be starch around the noodles, and that's going to cause the stickiness of the noodles. And also, um, you want to chill the noodles because at warm temperature, the noodles are going to soak up the liquid more. So if you chill it down, uh, it's going to get soggy slower. And tip two, um, after you boil the noodles and wash and chill, uh, you want to coat the noodles with oil. And by coating the noodles with oil, it's going to keep the noodles separate. And also, it's going to block the um, liquid from soaking into the noodles. And tip three, uh, you want to keep the sauce and any kind of liquid, soup, sauce, separate from the noodles. So in this case, we have the sauce in this mini bottle, and the noodles and topping is going to be in this container. So you have to keep it separate. So you're just removing all the liquid from the equation and so that noodles are going to get soggy slower. Okay. So please remember those three tips. And... I'm going to finish off making of the mazemen now. And mazemen is, the direct translation is mixed noodles. So, and it's soupless. So all you, do, all you have is a sauce and flavored oil and you mix it up with the noodles and you eat it. Okay. Great, so now I'm gonna start making the mazemen for takeout. And to boil the noodles, make sure to have rapidly boiling water. And don't just dump it in. Just break it apart as you put it into the boiling machine. And this noodle is going to be around three minutes boiling time. And for the first five or ten seconds, you want to move it around. Because usually at the beginning, noodle is going to be like sinking down the bottom. So you want to move it around. 
And you need rapidly boiling water because you want the noodles to be swimming freely in the basket. Because if it's in one clump, outside's going to be uh, overcooked, inside's going to be undercooked. So what you want to do is see, as you can see, the noodles starting to move around freely. That's important for boiling the perfect uh, ramen noodles. Okay. So as the noodles are boiling, uh, let me explain about the sauce. Uh, this sauce is for mazemang. And this recipe is ta taught at our ramen school. So if you're interested, please consider our ramen school. And because this is for takeout, it's going to be in this small bottle. And for the flavored oil, this is the flavored oil. This is also taught us taught our ramen school. Uh, it's flavored with leek and garlic and sesame oil. And because this is takeout, uh, we're going to be using this oil to coat the noodles. And let me talk about the toppings. In general, uh, when you talk about mazumen in Japan, uh, the typical toppings will be uh, leek, chives, uh, minced pork, and uh, seaweed, eggs, and fish powder. But today I'm going to change it up a little, and we're going to have the uh, original stuff, uh, ground pork, uh, fish, oil, uh, fish powder, eggs, seaweed, and we're going to change it up here. We have, for the green, we have avocados. Uh, for the red, we got tomatoes. And for the white, we got the onions, chopped up onion. Okay. Let's get back here to the boiling machine. 30 more seconds. Like I said, uh, for when you're preparing your takeout dish, you want to wash and chill the noodles before you uh, plate it in the container. So the noodles boiled, we move the hot water out and into the strainer bowl. And what you want to do here is you want to like wash the noodles gently so you can remove you remove all the starch on the outside of the noodles. So just like this. So by removing all the starch, it's going to prevent the noodles from sticking back together. And make sure to remove all the water out. That's going to dilute the sauce. And into this bowl with the flavored oil. Now what you want to do is coat every single noodle strand with uh, oil. By having this oil, it's going to keep the noodles separate, and also it's going to um, slow down the noodles from soaking up liquid. So just like this. So now, I'm going to put in the container. Okay, sorry. Uh, so when you're topping these uh mazeme, um just divide this circle into three. Actually, in this case, four. So one part is going to be avocados, for the green, and tomatoes, onion, and some seaweed. And this ground pork 
Uh, this is flavored with uh, ginger and garlic and soy sauce and some Chinese uh, spicy miso. And this will be in the middle. This will be in the middle. And then what you want to do is uh, you want to make a small hole in the middle because you're going to put the egg in the middle. Um, originally, uh, we like to put raw egg yolk in the middle, but because this is for takeout, uh, what we have here is soft boiled eggs. And finish off with fish powder on the side. So, mazemang for takeout is prepared like this. Just like this. And when you eat this, well, or when, the, when the customer eats this, um, the customer will put this sauce, when they're just about to eat it, and mix it up because it's mazemang, it's mixed noodles, and then, yeah, it's ready to eat. So because the sauce is separate, it's going to keep the bite to the noodles. It's not going to get soggy. Uh, so this is what we recommend to how to prepare the takeout dish. Okay. Like And once again, for the toppings, it can be anything. Um, what you'll probably need is the ground pork. Probably need the ground pork and egg. But other than that, you can just put anything. So there's no rules for the toppings. So just uh, play, play it around with that. OK. So that's mazeming. So shall we move on to yakisoba. Okay, so next will be yakisoba, uh, stir fry noodles. So uh, what we have here is um, minced uh, garlic and ginger, and sliced pork belly. And for the veggies, we have bean sprouts, cabbage, and carrots. And for the seasoning, um, when, you, when we usually uh, season the yakisoba, we use a yakisoba sauce. But uh, I'm pretty sure some of you don't have the access to yakisoba sauce. So I'll, um, today, I'll be showing you a simple recipe uh, seasoning with the noodles with salt and pepper and sweet soy sauce. This soy sauce, I just mix the soy sauce and sugar together. So uh, now that the ingredients are explained, um, oh sorry, and this is a topping. Um, once the yakisoba is done, we're going to top the top, uh, top it with some seaweed on top and ginger. Okay, so let's start cooking. Uh, we're going to boil this noodle. Once again, this is going to be three minutes. Okay, let's go. Oh, let's get back to the stove. So I'm heating up the pan. First, uh, vegetable oil. And then, garlic and ginger. And what you want to do is you want to slowly cook this garlic and ginger so you move all the flavor to the oil. 
and try not to burn them. So you're just going to cook it until it just has a slight color to it. So as you can see, there's like a slate color to it. So now I'm going to put the pork belly. And maybe cook it until the pork is like half cooked or 60% cooked. So just like this, half cook is fine. And then next, the cabbage, beans, sprouts, and carrots. Then salt and pepper. And so I'm going to pour this uh, sweet soy sauce, just half of it, because we're going to be using the remaining for the noodles. OK, once the noodles are, I mean, sorry, the vegetables are cooked, I'm just going to move it to the side. So we're going to be using this open space for the noodles later. So I'm just going to move it to the side. I turned off the heat. And the noodles are boiled, so let's go back to the boiling machine. Okay. Once again, uh, this is for takeout. Actually, um, when you're making yakisoba, um, in general, um, you want to wash the noodles after you boil. You want to remove all the starch. So just like this. So I'm going to reheat the pan. Boiled noodles. Salt and pepper. And the remaining sauce. And mix it up so that it's completely seasoned. Once the noodles are completely seasoned, you want to mix it up. Okay, just like this. So, actually, was um, completely cooked. So, I'm gonna start plating into a container.
lastly, some seaweed on top and ginger on the side. And one last tip for yakisoba, um, try not to put the lid on right away. Uh, because it's hot, uh, if you put the lid on, it's going to keep all the moisture inside and um, it's just going to make the noodles and everything. It's going to be too wet. So try to keep the lid open as long as possible and just close it right before serving to a customer. Okay, so let's move back. Or I'll bring the... So yeah, what we made today was a uh, mazemang, a slight change to it with avocados, tomatoes, and onion, and uh, yakisoba with a simple seasoning with soy sauce and sweet soy sauce. Oh, so we got a question from Chen Wu. Uh, the oil for mazesoba is animal fat or vegetable oil? Um, I like to use animal fat. Uh, it makes it, I, th I feel like it's going to taste better. But for takeout, it's going to get cold. And if you, when you use animal fat, it's going to solidify. So I prefer using vegetable oil for um, mazaman for takeout. So just like this. And so if I, uh, I'm going to recap uh, the points. Uh, for when you're preparing the takeout dish for noodles, uh, you have to prevent one, uh, you have to prevent the noodles from getting soggy. Two, you have to prevent the noodles from sticking. So to, to prevent those two problems, um, three tips. One, wash and chill the noodles. Two, coat the noodles with oil. And three, um, keep the sauce separate from the noodles. So remember those three tips, and um, probably it's gonna, you're going to end up with a better takeout uh, menus. Okay, so that's about it from my side. So I'm gonna pass it back to um, Akira. We're gonna be doing covering like all my a lot of like this kind of subject like in uh, coming classes. Um, you know, like because like you know we think that like takeouts deliveries are gonna be like a very important part of like um, you know noodle restaurants businesses. And um, um, yes, yeah, so like for example, like you know we may be like doing like you know like one class just on like uh, yakisoba or like you know maybe like tsukemen um, because like they are really, really popular and then like um, maybe like you know there's like very good um, items for uh, takeout and deliveries um, so you know like for if you guys like enjoy this class like please um, uh, hit the like button and then like um, you know if you guys like interested like in the mobile this kind of subject like or like some other aspects like of uh, noodles like noodle businesses um, please like you know leave them in the comments, and then like uh, send us some emails like uh, asking questions. Um, you know if you have like some other questions, like you may like you know come up like later after this class, like you know just like uh, send us like uh, three emails or something. And um, so thank you guys for watching, and uh, like I'm you know we hope like to be able like uh, see you guys in the next classes, and then like for. Um, you guys, uh, you know, for some of you like who are interested in this kind of subject, like, you know, like all, what we're doing, um, please subscribe to our um, YouTube channel. Uh, it's like Yamato Noodle. So thank you guys for watching today and uh, um, hope you guys to see you guys like next classes and then like um, stay home and stay healthy. Like, right. guys, bye. Thank you.